When a back tooth breaks, fractures, or shows signs of wear, restoring it can be more complex than simply placing a filling or a crown. In some cases, these restorations can trigger a series of complications such as pain, ongoing bite adjustments, fractures in other teeth, and muscle tension. So how can a dentist predict if this will happen in a specific patient and what steps should be taken to prevent it? Here are seven critical signs that every dentist should assess before restoring a posterior tooth. And if all of these signs are present, the patient may be at higher risk for further complications. Number one, tooth wear, chipping, or fractured cusps on posterior teeth. Significant wear on the back teeth suggests excessive grinding forces leading to the loss of tooth structure. Number two, minimal or no wear on anterior teeth. When the posterior teeth show wear, but the front teeth do not, it indicates that the patient grinds primarily in the back without moving their jaw forward to involve the anterior teeth. Since tooth wear is a sign of parafunction, which means an abnormal or excessive jaw use beyond normal activities like chewing and speaking, this reveals that the muscles of mastication are trying to remove whatever obstructs their rest position. Number three, no reported joint pain. The absence of joint pain suggests that the temporomandibular joints are not currently contributing to the patient's tooth wear. Number four, normal range of motion. The patient can open their mouth wide, move their jaw laterally, and there's no deviation during opening or closing, indicating healthy jaw function. No joint sounds. The absence of clicking, popping, or cracking noises in the TMJ points to stable joint function. Number six, healthy mandibular condyles on a panoramic x-ray. No signs of degeneration, bone changes, or flattening are visible in the mandibular condyles, which suggests that the joints are healthy. And number seven, a leave gauge test that measures higher than 1.5 millimeter slide. So when all of these signs are present and the leave gauge test still reveals a slide of 1.5 millimeters or greater, it indicates that equilibration may be necessary before restoring the broken molar. By identifying these clues early, the dentist can take proactive steps like equilibration to ensure a stable and successful outcome for posterior restorations. So why is equilibration necessary for this type of patient? When all seven signs are present, it indicates that the patient has a bite slide. This means that as they close their mouth, they initially contact a back tooth, then slide their jaw forward to bring the rest of the teeth into contact. Now in a healthy jaw joint, this happens because when the condyle is seated in the glenoid fossa and the lateral pterygoid muscle is relaxed, a back tooth obstructs complete closure. So to compensate, the lateral pterygoid contracts, shifting the condyle and mandible slightly forward so that all teeth can meet properly. This repeated movement causes wear on the tooth that interferes with full closure. Over time, the lateral pterygoid muscle learns to stay contracted to avoid a noticeable slide during jaw movement. The patient's typically unaware of this and may continue grinding until the interfering tooth wears down enough to allow full closure. The challenge arises when a dentist attempts to place a filling or crown on this problematic tooth. While the patient's mouth is open wide for the procedure, the lateral pterygoid muscle remains fully contracted for an extended period of time. Once the patient closes their mouth after the procedure, the lateral pterygoid may relax completely, allowing the condyle to fully seat in the glenoid fossa. If there is significant difference between the bite position where the teeth come together, which is the maximum intercuspation, and the position where the condyle is fully seated in its fossa, which is known as centric relation, the muscle may no longer remember its previous habitual contracted state. And this causes the patient to close and CR every time, leading to interference from the tooth that was previously in the way. As a result, the patient may feel like the filling or crown is too high, requiring multiple bite adjustments, or the restoration might chip, break, or become painful. The patient may also feel that the, their bite is off or feels uncomfortable. Equilibration helps to address this issue by adjusting the bite and eliminating the interference before placing the restoration, ensuring a stable and long-lasting result. Equilibration is a procedure aimed at adjusting the bite by selectively reshaping the biting surfaces of teeth. The goal is to create a balanced and even contact. 
between upper and lower teeth when the jaw is at rest and during movements. In this process, small amounts of enamel are removed to reshape the teeth so that they fit together more harmoniously. This is often performed when there's evidence of imbalance, like when the teeth don't fit together properly, causing stress on the muscles and the joints of the jaw. Dental equilibration can also be part of a broader treatment plan involving other therapies for TMD, restorative work, or orthodontics. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.